first, I think maybe Kevin, if you could tell us a little bit about um, sessions about uh, digital engagement and transformation. If you could tell us about what you mean by no customer left behind, and uh, and tell us a little bit about what you do at US Cellular to start. Great, thank you. So uh, let me give a little bit of background on US Cellular for folks who may not be familiar with us. So we are the fifth largest wireless carrier in the United States. Uh, we've been in operation for more than 30 years. We have a customer base of about 5 million customers. Uh, turned in a very good 2017, and our 2018 is off to a very good start as well. Uh, that's a little bit about us. I'll tell, talk a little bit about the environment that we're competing in right now. So the, the number of customers who are switching from one carrier to another um, is at its lowest level that it's ever been. Customers are, for the most part, pretty satisfied with their carriers. So that does two things for us. One, the upside of that, the very good news is churn is very low. So we're, we're holding on to those customers that are expensive to go out and, and acquire. The challenge, though, is we can never give a customer a reason to leave because they are so difficult to win back. So that's the environment we're in. Healthy environment, the industry is growing, we're, we're growing, uh, we're profitable, but we're in a very, very, very competitive environment where, again, we can never give a customer a reason to leave because they just may not come back. Gotcha. And you uh, have obviously in, in undertaken uh, some kind of transformation program. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us when you started it and where you are now in that journey? Yeah, so uh, we're, it's a smaller transformation program, but one of the things that I think folks have been hearing here over the last few days and, and likely believe even before you got here is that transformation programs stand their best chance of success when you start small. Start small, generate quick wins, grow confidence uh, in, in your capability, and I think that leads to greater success further on. So this was a fairly small undertaking to start with. We called this initiative No Customer Left Behind. The idea there is we never wanted a customer who came into one of our stores to leave without service. And what we were finding is it happened more often than it ever should. And primarily it was system reasons. We were causing customers to leave without service. We were costing, causing customers to be dissatisfied with their in-store experience. Sales folks were doing a great job. On the system side, we weren't doing such a good job. So as we thought about this, we thought we, we, want, no, we want there to be no customer left behind, no customer without service when they, when they leave the store. That was, that was the genesis of the, of the program. So earlier, we ran a questionnaire, and we talked about blockers for customer satisfaction, actually digital engagement, but let's yes. uh, put it all in the same bucket. Mm -hmm. And we asked, you know, if you could have a ranking of what the main blocker was, and we, we listed uh, strategy gaps, people and culture gaps, mm -hmm. uh, capital constraints, you know, what, what would, and, and systems and technology constraints. So if, if those four were put in front of you uh, on that day that you had the meeting, yes. what would you have ranked as, as number one and how did you go about addressing that as the first blocker? Number one, the number one biggest blocker is also the number one greatest enabler and that's people and culture. It is absolutely people and culture. So for me and for this project, it was all about mindset. It was getting folks to change the way we're, they were thinking. So instead of thinking, oh, it's okay if most customers leave relatively satisfied, it was, no, we want everyone to leave very, very satisfied. So it had to start with the, with the people and the mindset, the culture. And I think uh, you know, smart people with enough money and enough time can do just about anything. Uh, we don't have all of the money, we didn't have all the time, so, but we got the smart people aligned on the problem. So for us, that was job one is, let's get clear with the people in the room what the problem is and get clarity around that problem. So let me go a little bit of a, take a left turn and then we're gonna come back to the mainstream because the news today, if you're following US uh, wireless uh, telecoms, is that T-Mobile is, uh, is marrying up with Sprint. And mm -hmm. T-Mobile has made quite a name for themselves by being the uncarrier. And one of the things that uh, John, their CEO, will do is you know stand up and talk about how uh, inept AT&T, dumb and dumber, right? It's right. a Tweedledum and Tweedledum <laughs> yes. uh, are. And you know, very large organizations, uh, impressive and formidable, mm -hmm. but perhaps you know, are more susceptible to gaps on the customer experience side because of their, their size. So it puts you in a very unique position then if you take the you know, number one and two are who they are, three and four are hooking mm -hmm. up with each other. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you try to uh, be different as well? Do the, the uncarrier to the uncarrier or do you try to take a page out of the T-Mobile playbook? They've done very well with NPS and customer trust. Mm -hmm. How do you look at uh, the market in the competitors that you're up against? So great, it's a great question, very timely of course. So two ways that we look at it. One is, 
if numbers three and four combine, then we go from being the fifth largest carrier to being the fourth largest carrier. So good for us overnight, Fantastic. we just grew. So that's great. Uh, in terms of the opportunity, we look at just what you were talking about. Uh, where is the opportunity to cause a greater experience, to create a greater experience? So I, I wouldn't say it's so much as taking a page from T-Mobile's playbook as I would say it's getting very clear on what we're great at. We can't go out and try to be Verizon or try to be AT&T. We won't win that game. The game we can win is the one we're best at playing that, and that is great service to customers in smaller cities, smaller towns, rural America. They're customers that right now, frankly, I think are overlooked and maybe not very highly valued by some of the bigger carriers. That's our sweet spot. So rather than trying to play someone else's game, we've got to be great at our own. So on the digital, so I'm not, now I'm going to come back okay. and say the, the no customer left behind. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about first what you did in the physical channel, the retail store, to make sure that when I'm walking in that store, I'm walking out, my level of trust and perception with yes. the U.S. Cellular has uh, either stayed the same at very, a very high level or, or gone up. What kinds of things did you undertake? The very first thing we had to undertake was understand our current state. So we had to get very clear and we measured to get hard data that said this is how many customers are walking out without service. This is how many customers over the course of a day, a week, a month in our busiest stores are leaving dissatisfied. So we had to establish a baseline from which we could operate and then ultimately measure uh, the effectiveness of our program. So that was number one is let's just get clear on the current state. How did you, just to, out of curiosity, how do you do that? Do you have people waiting outside the store and say, you know, it, how was uh, it? How we, was your experience in the store? Um, again, a, a couple of ways. We talk with associates who are serving customers, uh, but we get hard data. We get the data from our systems, from our, our partner on the, on the OSS BSS side, who provides us with the data that says, hey, here's how many of these orders got stuck. So we have the, the term stuck orders, and we would count the, the, count the number of stuck orders over a day, a week, a month, on, in, across all of our stores, and it was a really embarrassingly high number for us. So too many orders were getting stuck in our process, and when they got stuck, a customer would leave the store without service. So that was job one, is let's just understand the current state with facts. And how do you unstuck orders from a people and technology point of view? Uh, you get clear on what the problem is that you're trying to design for, and in our case, it was eliminate the stuck orders. And then we said, all right, we're gonna think grandly. We're gonna think great. What would great look like in this space? And we got audacious. We, we said, we wanna go from the number of customers whose orders were getting stuck, we wanted to go from about 20% to 1%. How great would that be? An audacious Sounds goal. We didn't want an incremental 1% a year for the next 20 years. No one has that kind of patience. Customers certainly don't. So we wanted an audacious goal that we could orient the team around. So getting clear on the problem, getting audacious about the objective, but then here's the fine balance. It's we didn't have all the money to throw at it, so we had to say, all right, we know what great would look like here. Now very practically, what can we go out and achieve? So that, that's where the, the balance is. Never stop thinking great or grand or uh, audacious, but get very practical about here's what I can do to create a good solution. So 20 to 1%, that sounds completely audacious to me. and. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you uh, measure? I'm just trying to get a sense of timeline. When did you? Uh, over the course of a year. Over a year. Over and so year. you want to tell us a little bit about the progress? We've made great progress. We're not at 1% yet, but we're closer to 1% than we are to 20 That's good. So we've made really good progress. And in fact, um, our, our vendor partner in this, Amdocs, has been a great partner with us to drive this down. The business case was actually built on just cutting the stuck order percentage in half. We've blown that away. We're way better than that. So the business case has proved itself uh, in. Uh, hand over fist. So we're doing great there, but now we're hungry to get to that 1%. So let me ask a question about, you talked about you know, the, the general population that you're serving, rural areas. Yeah. I would assume that in the United States, you know, uh, even rural populations still have the same number of digital natives that want to interact with you in, in a totally digital way. Yes. So have you thought about, let's say you can get to 20 to one in the store, have you mm -hmm. thought about the number of people that are coming into the stores that really don't even want to come into the store, yep. that, that just want to resolve their issue on their handset? For sure. You know, um, and how you're addressing that as, an, as either a next phase or as a uh, transformation in parallel, if you will. It's a great question. It's one that we wrestle with all the time is, uh, we want people coming into our stores. We don't want to miss an opportunity to create a relationship, a connection to demonstrate that we care about the customer experience. No better way to do that that I know of than to look someone in the eye and, and have that conversation. So it's, I don't want to force customers not to come in, but I do want to give them the choice. So those who still want to come in, great, let's take great care of them. 
those who don't, we, we've got to increase our, the, the effectiveness of, of our, of our e-commerce channel, our web channel. It's surprising, uh, Jim and I to you, it, almost 40% of our customers who come into our stores just want to pay a bill. They just want to hand someone money. And so we, it, as the, even though they can do this online, they still want to come in, connect with someone, and say, all right, see you again next month. We do business with, uh, with operators in the Caribbean. And you know, the credit card penetration in those com companies is still low. Even if it got higher, the day that you pay your bill is seen as a social event yes. in some of these places. So you, they literally congregate in the parking lot as they're waiting to pay in line. And even if you move to digital channels, it's an opportunity to create that intimacy, right? Yes. So they're actually doing store redesign, which is actually we started talking about digital engagement, and here we are talking about yeah. you know making the physical touch point a little better. Maybe you can talk a little bit about in the in the overall strategy how you see the two channels uh, living hand in hand to enable physical trust with, with digital enablement. It, for us, it's all about give the customers the, the choice to be served the, the way they want to be served. I think one of the misconceptions about, about, the digital, about digital transformation and customers today, the misconception I believe is out there is that customers want something totally different than they used to want. I don't think that's true. I think customers want what they've always wanted, but what they want now is choice. So they still want great service. They still want a great product. They still want great value for their money, but they want the choice to decide, do I want to come into the store this month or do I want to go online? So for us, it's a balance then of physical retail presence and then enabling them to do whatever they want to do online with us. Am I allowed to ask a, a tough question? Yes. It, 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 you know, the, the tough question is this. By the way, I have to say that uh, for all the U.S. telco PowerPoint templates I've ever seen, that has to be the sexiest one. Like that is like a, it's like a, <laughs> a carnival. <laughs> so if, if you create that kind of, you know, that uh, kind of culture and feel, you know, it's about how mm -hmm. how the operator mm -hmm. makes you feel. If that's the way your customers feel about you, you must be doing yes. a great job. But the the tougher question is. Uh, you know, no customer left behind. So what do you do with a customer that comes into the store and says, you know, I love U.S. Cellular, mm -hmm. um, but I'm really looking to um, look to get more services because AT&T and DirecTV, they have the quad play bundle. You're still really a traditional pure play wireless operator. Um, how do you, uh, and maybe that's not the spirit of leave no customer behind, but how have you looked at trying to fulfill the needs of a digital customer mm -hmm. that wants a little bit more than wireless? Uh, you're right, it's not the spirit of no customer left behind, but it's still as important to us as, as, uh, as the no customer left behind initiative. For us, it's really that the discussion right up front around needs is what is it, if you're our customer walking into our store, let's do that needs assessment, let's really understand you. And if, you are, if we are not the right carrier for you, we'll tell you that. Hmm. We'll tell you that because the last thing we need is to convince you to sell you something we can't be or that we don't have, have you join us, leave a frustrated a month later and go online and tell people what a terrible experience they had with U.S. Cellular. Right. So word of mouth, you know, in this industry, the word of mouth is so powerful. So we want you as a customer, but we don't want to do the wrong thing by you either. So it's, again, it's, it's the balance. So we, we have your slides up, and I believe I, one of the slides had some metrics about, uh, mm -hmm. I can, if you're interested in sharing a little bit about uh, what you've achieved. I'll do that. Um, so there are a few of the metrics. So uh, I said earlier that we started by baselining. Let's get clear and let's get factual on what the experience is. We put the program in place, and then over time, we've, we've, you, know, you can see from the metrics some of the improvements that we've made. Uh, from eight hours to 15 minutes. A lot, and a lot of this that we're doing is behind the scenes. The customer never experiences any kind of delay. Huge, huge improvement for us. But uh, really the way I would summarize this slide without going into any of the details is you've got to be able to measure what you're doing. Or one, you can't prove in the value of your program and you certainly can't build credibility as a transformation operation if you can't say, hey, here's how much better we got and here's the data to prove it. Mm -hmm. Are there any issues with the, uh, going back to the stuck orders, are there any issues that you had to park and say, we're going to solve those another day? Or did you, you know, in terms of getting to the 1%, did you have to say, I'm, I'm going to tackle the biggest problems, even if you know they might slow down the, the uh, we, end game. We did, we did. So um, you're familiar with transformation programs, clearly. So there were issues we had to park, but it was pretty easy for us to park them because we said, let's get really clear on the problem we're trying to solve. There are other things we could do that would make it even better, maybe go from 1% to zero. That wasn't the problem. So it was really harnessing people and getting them aligned on this is the problem to solve. And, and you know, we've got some super smart people who want to create an elegant solution, but these are business-funded, business-driven 
solutions that require technology to enable them. So it's, it's another trap that sometimes we fall into is, hey, look at what a cool, slick solution we're able to create. But cool and slick isn't what the business is paying for. What they're paying for is results. So we need to do something that's more practical than elegant because it's business driven and it's business funded to go do it. You know, I'm in some ways we're the, uh, the same type of person in that you're an uh, IT leader and uh, I started a software company and, mm -hmm. and many times in terms of chasing, bit, and so we're both in the software development business is what yes. I'm saying, and many times in chasing uh, solutions, your developers want to build elegant solutions. Mm -hmm. And it's tough because software developers, you know, they want to be creative, they want to be challenged. So how do you keep everyone on script, but still keep them motivated that they're actually delivering something that they can feel proud about, as opposed to just, I'm just developing a, an unstuck order uh, yeah. solution? So w one of the most effective ways I know is if getting everyone aligned around what that vision is, what the vision of success is, and then be able to measure it and say, look what you've accomplished, look what you've done. So that's one way to keep most people focused on the goal, but there's always a few I don't want focused on the goal. I want them pushing. I want them saying, hey, what about this? What about that? Think about innovating here. So I, I never want everyone to only look this direction. I want most of them looking that way because I need them to solve the problem, but I still want the, a few outliers to say, hey, there might be a better way of doing this that we never thought about. And how do you align everyone? Town halls and... Uh, communicate, the, communicate, yeah. communicate. So one-to-one -one communication, town hall communication, team meetings. Uh, every chance we get, we are in leaders and associates sit together to, to, to share. Wow, that's yep. great. Yep. So it certainly sounds like if in a year you've gone from 20 to less than half that amount, you've yep. achieved a tremendous amount of success. And mm -hmm. I can see how the business case would have more than paid yeah. for itself in, uh, in that way. Yep. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions in a couple minutes, but I would, you know, so we've kind of gone unscripted, and I thank you yeah. for being dynamic on your feet here. Sure. Um, but I just wanted to ask you if you had anything that you might want to add about, you know, this No Customer Left Behind program, and if you had any takeaways for the, for the crowd here. Yeah, a couple of, for me, the, the summaries of the takeaways, one would be is never to forget Get that it is business driven and technology enabled, not the other way around. Uh, that's why we are here. We think of ourselves in the IT organization at US Cellular, we think of ourselves as a service organization, not a technology shop, not an IT shop, but a service organization. And that mentality, very, very important to keep us kind of on script, like you, like you said. Uh, that's number one. Number two is never lose sight of who it is you're serving. So we have a program we established a couple of years ago within, within IT where every leader spends a day in a retail store. And every leader spends part of a day on calls with customer care, understanding the customer experience, understanding our associates' experience with those customers so that we can see firsthand that, hey, this design, not so great. It's taking too many clicks or it's taking too long. It gives us that first, it, it's firsthand knowledge and it really helps us uh, strengthen the relationship with our own sales associates. When they see that every leader in our IT shop is there and spending the day and learning and asking questions, helps build the relationship. Mm -hmm. So you those are a couple your, of... Take your vendors along to do the same thing? Uh, uh, we do. Oh, very good. We do. Nothing works better than... We do. Um, the owners in the in the solution. That's right, and it, collaboration. You cannot. No one does this alone. No one company. No one group does this alone. You've got to collaborate with someone who is as invested in making it great as you are.